No, no, can we just do No, no, can we just do Osaka, 
your name because unto you shall the gathering of your people be. We thank you for how much you brought us. We say please accept our thanksgiving in the name of Jesus. Father, we ask that as your word comes, let it come with simplicity and with power. Lord, let lives be touched. Let souls be saved. Let men be delivered. And let the kingdom of God be enlarged. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I want to sincerely thank our daddy and our mommy, daddy and mommy Gio, for this great opportunity to stand before this great congregation, for giving us the privilege. I say God will continue to keep them in the name of Jesus. I also want to thank our IYP, Pastor Belemina Obunge, and all the pastors that I stand here to re represent from the South-South region, I thank you and I pray God will continue to honor them in the name of Jesus. I've been asked to speak on the topic enlarge. And my anchor text is taken from Isaiah chapter 54, verse 1 to 2. But I will take verse 2 because it is our anchor scripture. The Bible says in Isaiah chapter 54, verse 2, it says, Enlarge the place of thy tent and let them stretch forth the curtains of thine habitation. Spare not. Lengthen thy cords and strengthen thy stakes. Hallelujah. I want you to tell your neighbor, give me space. For after this service, I will enlarge. You're not saying it like a believer. Tell your neighbor, give me space. I am enlarging. Hallelujah. For us to discuss enlarge, you must understand what enlarge means. The word enlarge means to grow larger, to make bigger, and to expand beyond your present situation. To grow larger, to make bigger, to make room, and to expand beyond your current condition or situation. We can't talk about enlarge or enlargement without knowing the one who has called us into this mandate of enlargement. And the person who has called us into enlarging is the Almighty God. The Bible made us to understand in Psalm chapter 24, verse 1. Psalm 24, verse 1, it says, The earth is the Lord, and the fullness thereof. The Bible made us to understand that God owns the whole earth. He is the owner of the earth. 
he has the seal of O, the certificate of occupancy of the whole earth. So when the Almighty is telling you to enlarge, you should know that someone is talking. The devil doesn't own the earth. The Lord is the one that owns the earth by Psalm. He says, the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. The world and they that dwell in it. So if we have the Almighty God who has the seal of O of the earth, the original landlord of the earth, then I don't know why we will limit ourselves. The Bible says we should occupy. If it says occupy, it means there are spaces everywhere for us to occupy. So occupy till I come. Enlarge your tent, as our anchor's test says. I speak to someone today. Because our almighty father has the, own, has the earth. In the name of Jesus, this year, you are going to get an allocation in the name of Jesus. For those of us that are looking for physical allocation, you will be a landlord this year in the name of Jesus. So you must know who is telling you to enlarge. He doesn't just own lands on earth. He also has lands in heaven. Jesus Christ speaking, he said, I go to prepare a place for you. When we talk about enlarge, we are talking about places. We are talking about territories. We are talking about portions. And Jesus Christ says, I'm going to prepare a place for you. If I were lying, I wouldn't have told you. So even here on earth, we have allocations. And in heaven, you also have a place. So I don't know who wants to miss heaven. But I want to speak to you. Me and you, we are going to get our portion in heaven in the name of Jesus. As long as the Lord lives, you will not miss heaven in the name of Jesus. So we are going to be considering some men in the Bible that enlarged. We'll be learning some lessons from them. And we will know the price they paid. There are men in the Bible that enlarge. And there are lessons we can learn from them. And the prices they pay. As a youth, listen. Because there is a mandate on our head to enlarge. Enough of mediocrity. Enough of sitting down. We need to rise up. So let us look deep into this man. How they enlarge the kingdom. And the lessons we can learn from them. Number one person, Abraham. In Genesis chapter 12, verse 1. Genesis chapter 12, verse 1. The Bible, told, the Bible says that God told Abraham, I will give you this land. Now the Lord said unto Abraham, get thee out of thy country and from thy, from thy kindred. And I will show you a land. He also told Abraham that he will give him a land too. And the Bible made us to understand that Abraham raised an altar to the Lord. So men that enlarge are men of the altar. Men that enlarge are men that understand covenant relationship. If you check the life of Abraham, you will know that Abraham, he was always like cutting covenant with God. He was always relating with God. Wherever the Lord meets Abraham, he erects an altar. So for those of us that are wishing to enlarge, you must have a relationship with the owner of the land. You cannot own a land without meeting the owner of the land. You cannot enlarge in any sphere without meeting the one that has introduced that sphere. No matter the sphere you see on earth, it can be captured from the scripture. So enlargement mandate must be tied to the one who called us into that mandate. You must be connected with the Almighty. So Abraham was always raising altar. He had a relationship with God. And one singular word the Lord gave to Abraham, Abraham held on to it because he knew the one who told him to enlarge. God told him, I will make your, you a great nation. I will make your seed to, to fill the earth. And it was looking like a joke. It was just Isaac that God gave to Abraham. And the son of the bondwoman. But after Isaac, here we are. We are all seeds of Abraham. This is to show you that the enlargement mandate is not a joke. From Abraham, God translated to Isaac. And now we quote them as our father. The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob. And now he can become the God of Peter, the God of Inkechi, the God of John. Because there is a room for enlargement. I don't know who is here listening to me. As long as the Lord liveth. Whatever seed the Lord has planted in your life, there shall be an enlargement. Don't sit at a place. If the Lord has given you a word like he gave to Abraham, hold on to the word. The one that spoke to you cannot lie. He didn't lie to Abraham. Even if Abraham didn't see the promise, the altar Abraham built, his children stumbled upon it and it activated that promise. Isaac, Jacob, 
and we are here today, seeds of Abraham. Don't neglect the word of God. It is a seed of enlargement he has put in you. And whatever word the Lord has told you, hold it and run with it. And I pray God will, give, will help us in Jesus' name. So you must have relationship with the one who has called us to enlarge. So number one, you must connect with the one who has called us to enlarge. Connect by relationship. The second person we'll be considering, or the second set of people, are the sons of the prophets. I want to thank my dear sister for speaking about the sons of the prophets. But the sons of the prophet in 2 Kings chapter 6 from verse 1 to 6, they, told, they, they said to themselves that the place we dwell in is too straight. It means the place we are dwelling in is too narrow. The same way many of us who have looked at our lives, we have seen specific areas of our life which we, are, we desire to enlarge. Like the sons of the prophet. You've said this place is too small for me. This one room is too small for me. I have five children and I can't continue living here. This salary is too small for me. I have responsibilities and I can't continue to live with this salary. I have great responsibility as a pastor and this anointing is too small. God increased my anointing. They had the zeal. They had the strength. They had desire. And they took off. But they were very wise to go to Elijah and they told him, Master, this place is too small. We want to go get wood so that we can expand our tents. But can you go with us? Can you go with us? And Elijah agreed to go with them. And when they went there, why they were cutting? They were skillful in cutting. They had the strength to pull down trees. But it got to the point when the axe head fell. And the point where the axe head fell, none of them could prefer solution. But I want to tell you, especially my generation, that there are places where your skills can take you. There are situations you will have that your strength can deal with, with them. But there are challenges you're going to have. You will need a spiritual authority to intervene. So the axe head fell. And when they went to the master, they cried, Alas, master, for it was borrowed. What is that thing in your life that has fallen to the ground and is sinking? And when Elijah came, Elijah asked them a single question. Where did it fall? And they showed him. And he picked the wood and threw it there. And the axe head began to float. What am I saying to my generation? We are too quick to take off. The Lord has given you skills. You are eager to enlarge. But there is, there is something you must not ignore. The place of fatherhood. The place of spiritual covering. Many of us are too quick to take off. God has called you into ministry. God has called you into different spheres of influence. And you're taking off without a spiritual covering. If you are in a hurry to blow, you will blow out of existence. You need a covering over your life. You need a father. That's why the Lord has given us our father in the Lord. God has given us pastors. He says, I will give you pastors after my heart. Don't ignore their places in your life. Don't ignore the role they have played in your life. Many of you have departed from your local church. I want to tell you, go back. Because when the chiefs are down, you will need someone to call and say, Alas, master, I'm sinking. When Peter was, was in the boat and Jesus was walking, he said, Master, if it be thy, bid me come. And, Peter, and Jesus Christ told Peter, It is I, come. He took the instruction from Jesus' mouth to make Peter to walk on the sea. And when Peter began to walk, he took his eyes off Jesus and he started sinking, just like the axe head. And when he looked up to Jesus, Jesus held his hand and asked him, why did you doubt? Many of you are sinking already. Many of you are sinking in that area of your influence because you've ignored the place of fatherhood. Look back to your father and say, alas, master, I am sinking and you're going to rise again. I speak over your life. In the name that is above every other name, the Lord will restore the connection between you and your spiritual covering. In the name of Jesus. So the number two is connection to the representative of the almighty God. You must still be connected to those that represent God here on earth. No man walks alone. I pray the Lord will give you understanding in Jesus' name. The number three person people will be considering are the disciples. The Lord gave them a mandate. 
In fact, the Lord set the coordinates of the mandate. He told them, you're going to go from Jerusalem to Judea, to Samaria, and to the uttermost part of the earth. It goes to tell us that God is very definite about enlargement. He told them the places they are going to pinpoint their enlargement. And from Judea, they should spread to the uttermost part of the earth. But there was one thing he told them. He says, tarry ye in Jerusalem until you are endued with power. You cannot enlarge in some areas if you don't have power. Genuine encounter with power will answer to many errors we are facing. So this man, Luke chapter 24 verse 49, and in Acts chapter 1 verse 8, this man, they went, and they went to the upper room. They stayed in the place of prayer, and they were praying. They stayed for days. When the power came, the difference was clear. There is something that can come upon your life and you will be announced to your generation. Peter, an ordinary fisherman, when the power came upon him, an ordinary fisherman like Peter, when he stood up and he spoke, the Bible says 3,000 souls were converted in one day. Enlargement. I don't know what you are doing. I don't know what the Lord has put in your hand. Can you tarry to carry power? Can you tarry? To carry the genuine power that is needed for your ministry. It doesn't matter the sphere. It doesn't matter where the Lord has called you. In the political sphere. In the financial sphere. In the, in the media sphere. There is a power allocated there. And if you can carry that power. The sky, the sky will be your starting point. My generation listen again. Don't be in a hurry. Tarry. Until you are endued with power. The difference will be clear when a man with power comes and a man without power comes. You will know the difference. Because when Peter spoke, the words Peter spoke were ordinary words. But the Bible made us to understand that the words are spirit and they are life. You, a man can be speaking ordinary words and you think they are, they are ordinary words. But when it begins to come, it gives life. And you see 3,000 men begin to come to Christ. I don't know who you are. But I speak over your life in the name that is above every other name. The Lord will endure you with power and set you on course for enlargement in the name of Jesus. Finally, there are enemies of enlargement. God has called you to enlarge, yes, but there are those persons that are fighting against your enlargement. Zechariah chapter 3 from verse 1. Zechariah chapter 3 verse 1. The Bible says, And he showed me Joshua the high priest, standing before the angel of the Lord, and stayed set and standing at his right hand to resist him. This was Joshua, a high priest of the Lord, called to function as a priest in the house of the Lord. But the devil was standing at his right hand, accusing him. Many of you, there is a seed of enlargement in your life. But the accuser is always accusing you before God because he has planted a seed of sin in you that has caused you to stain your garment. The garment of Zachariah was speaking, even if Zachariah was not speaking. The Bible says Zachariah was standing before the Lord, but the garment he was wearing was already polluted. But the Lord intervened. He said, take away the filthy garment and clothe him with a new garment. I don't know who you are today. The devil has accused you. The devil has planted seeds of sin in your life that you you've, you you've, you've spoken to yourself that you can't enlarge but the lord will intervene today and the filthy garment will be taken away the reproach will be taken away and he will set you on course for enlargement in verse 7 of zachariah chapter 3 verse 7 the lord the, the lord said that if zachariah if joshua will walk with him we walk in his ways. That he will give him places. Zechariah chapter 3 verse 7. That I will give you places amongst these people. There are places. There are territories yet conquered. There are campuses to be invaded. There are villages we have not entered. The Arusiziji has given us a mandate of vision 2032. 40 million souls to be won. The question is how many souls do you have? Because it's an allocation. 
if each and every one of us hear that, 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 that in the next 30 years that you can work to get 40 million, I believe we won't be seated here. You are going to work for that 40 million era. But because it is souls, some persons are still sitting down. I want to tell you, the kingdom of darkness is not sleeping. So we as believers must not sleep. We must arise and enlarge our tents. We must arise and enlarge our influence. And there are conditions to this thing. Number one, you must be obedient to the Lord. You must obey his precepts. Number two, you must be pure. Because a dirty man cannot enlarge. Many persons are still enlarging in darkness. Yes, as much as we can enlarge in light, we can also enlarge in darkness. The Bible says the part of the righteous shineth brighter and brighter unto a perfect day. It therefore means that the part of the unrighteous will shine darker and darker unto a doom. So don't enlarge in darkness. Enlarge in light. Come out from amongst them and be a separate. Abraham was with Lot at some point, And they were arguing about land. And the Bible made us to understand that when Lot left Abraham, the Lord told Abraham, lift up your eyes. For as far as you see, I will give it to you. There are some people in your life that you need to separate from your life for the Lord to speak, speak to you. I don't know. You are a young man. You are a young woman. There are people in your life that has limited your enlargement. The moment Lot left Abraham, the Lord told Abraham, lift up your eyes. There are people you have to separate from. The Bible says, come out among them. Come out from amongst them and be a separate. And I will receive you. Whatever thing holding you from enlarging, I pray that from today there will be a separation. So if you want to enlarge, you have to come out of darkness. So when daddy begins to give the altar call, don't wait where you are. Run quickly to the altar and embrace Jesus. For there is a light waiting for you. There are territories that are yet untaken. There are lands that we need to occupy. My generation, listen. There are campuses that have not been invaded. There are villages that have not been entered. Who will go? Like Isaiah said, here am I, send me. I want you to rise up on your feet and begin to talk to the Lord and say, Lord, here am I, send me. In this mandate of enlargement, I will go, I will go, I will go. Thank you, Father. For in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. And so, Father, we thank you. We bless your name for this mandate you have called us into. Heavenly Father, we ask that whatever forces that are standing against our enlargement, you take them away from us in the name of Jesus. Father, give us the grace to live pure. Give us the grace to be obedient. Give us the grace to serve and sacrifice where you've called us. That your enlargement mandate shall be fulfilled. Thank you, Heavenly Father. For in Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Let somebody shout hallelujah.